Hey, we're gonna take a look at Quizlet in this video very quickly, the update for 2020. Let's go. All right, guys, if you've never used Quizlet before, Quizlet is essentially a flashcard-based system that allows you to study terms and definitions with a lot of different ways of maybe memorizing them. So you may have to memorize the definition or you can take a look at the spelling or you can test yourself. And so this is a great platform for those that want to individually learn on their own or teachers that want to assign this content to students that are working sort of in a flipped model, a hybrid model, or remotely entirely to get some uh, formative assessment, help the kids study on their own, develop those study skills, and then to be able to coach them when they come back together on what they need to learn. Okay, so there's awesome data in the back end. We'll show you that, and uh, let's hop in. So I've had a paid teacher's account with Quizzo for quite some time, and uh, I'll give you some reasons as to why, whether that's right for you or not, you can kind of figure that out. But essentially what you have are sets. So Quizlet is a flashcard based learning system where you can learn all sorts of things. But so the first thing you're going to have are your sets. You can put them into folders and organize them as they go. But uh, let me give you an example. The first set that I'll talk about is what is science. So I start off the year with something similar to this. There's a flashcard. The kids can click on it, right? And it goes through just normal flashcard behavior. But then they have a sort of a gamified experience where if we go to this learn tab, it gives you the definition. All right. So a statement that describes how a variable will be measured. So an operational definition is what that is, right? So it gives a little quiz mode here in learn. And then I'm going to go back. There you have some options up here for learn where if you star the ones you're struggling with or I can star them as a teacher, have kids look at just the ones that I've starred. Um, and then we can go through whether you want to give them the term, the definition, all sorts of question types. Pretty helpful if you want to customize the way that the kids go through the learn phase. The right phase is a little bit more challenging in that they spelling does matter. So the variable that it's purposefully changed. Now, I can think about this and I can call it the independent variable, right? So I change the independent variable, but if I spell it wrong, it's, it's going to tell me that I got it wrong. Now it says I got it correct, right? So um, you can override those and, and do that yourself, but kids will get a little frustrated sometimes with that feedback that they got it wrong if it's just a spelling issue, depending on what grade level you teach and whether that matters to you. So that's the right option. And then we have the spell, right? So if they can do that one on their own, they can generate a test. Now, this is the way that I, I generally used to do this is I would have kids generate a test. And if they go down to options, then what I would do is if I just wanted multiple choice, right? Or multiple choice and matching, I could select the ones that I've starred because maybe those are the ones I care about or all of them. I'm going to start with the definition or just the term. What do I want them to answer with? Do I want all the questions? Do I want to show images? All that stuff. I've exported these into paper copies or PDFs and converted them to Google uh, Forms in the past. Really helpful if kids are studying the parallel term in Quizlet. And then the quiz that I generate in a Google Form is really similar to that. I like uh, that option because it's not confusing to the kids. They're seeing it the same all the time and I can remix them if I need to. But so that's the quiz. They can quiz themselves. And then there's uh, some games down at the bottom. So match, what I've found, it's that students just super quickly randomly drag and they don't actually do this purposefully. So the process of finding meaning in the data, it's all about time. So all they have to do is just quickly drag something around until it disappears and they get the high score. They only care about getting the high score. They don't actually learn from this. In my opinion, that's what I think. I don't use match. Gravity uh, is like an anxiety attack waiting to happen, but it's fun. So think of like sort of space invaders. As it comes down, then they have to answer the question, but they do have to know how to spell it. So interpreting data, right? They, they got to understand, well, they have to type out the definition. So it can be kind of challenging, right? Even for me as the instructor, like remembering what I put in there. And then live is the one that you do in class, and that is a blast. Kids love doing the live play. It generates a code, you know, um, and then you create the game with the set when you do. 
Kids work in teams. I like the team thing. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do teams with students. You can have them um, all working at a table. You can separate them and not let them talk to each other, which is kind of defeats the purpose of a team. But um, the other thing I've done is two in, two out, or uh, rotate where they line up all of their devices across the table and then they rotate in where one student has to know them all. Um, we do two one, so depending on how many in a team, that's a fun way to do it. Or you can have them compete against each other as individuals. This is a fairly new advancement in Quizlet. It hadn't changed much since uh, Quizlet Live was first introduced and now they're starting to keep up with some of those other platforms like GimKit, Quizzes, and Kahoot with the individual way of doing it. So I'm gonna just hop back here. So those are all the ways that you can have students either study or play, collaborate with other people, but this is where I think it's it's also pretty powerful. So down at the bottom, you can add the, add this to a class if you have an LMS like Google Classroom or Canvas set up. So you can assign this to a class as a homework. You can edit, you can share them out, or you can look at your class progress. So if I look at my first period, right, why I think this is useful to me is that I can see what a student has worked on or not worked on. If all they're doing is gravity, match, or the test, and they haven't worked on these, then I can just have a quick conference with the student and let them know, hey, you're you're uh, you're kind of wasting your time. Let's use this uh, purposefully. And then you click on mastery, and it tells you what percentage of the the ones they've done really well on. So the data on the back end of Quizlet is really, really helpful. And I think it's something that helps you to use this sort of as a formative assessment with students and to coach them maybe on individual terms. So if I were using Quizlet remotely and I wanted to talk to students in class when they're back with me about the issues that matter, this might give me an idea on the whole class, what they're doing well, or each individual student, what they're struggling with. So Quizlet has uh, kind of upped their game with some of the data and some of the live versions going individual, uh, things that maybe they, they hadn't had in the past. So that's what I think is really helpful here. Once you can assign this to a class and get some data, some feedback and help kids grow on that. Okay, so that is uh, Quizlet. I hope it was helpful. I hope you dive right in. Um, I've paid for the full version of this to get some of that data on the back end that you don't get in the free version, but I think it's well worth it if you're using this regularly with students. Now, uh, keep a lookout for some of the other gamified study platforms that I've reviewed, like GimKit. So I did a, a, a video on using GimKit remotely. I'll link that up right up there. And I'm gonna do a comparison with that one. I'm really interested in quizzes, Kahoot, or whatever else you're using. So if you're using a gamified platform for students, go ahead and drop that in the comments below. I'd love to check that out and help each other maybe review that for others. So uh, until next time, this is Brian with Ball Guy Sai. We'll see you later.